This is part two in a series of videos on how to solve a particular inclined plane problem as an example. And if you haven't watched part one, I would encourage you to go back and do that. It might be kind of confusing to jump in here in the middle. But this is where we stopped. We have discovered a relationship between the uh, x component of gravity, which is mg sine theta, and the, uh, the frictional force, uh, as long as this thing is not moving, right? We're still in static friction. Now, if you think about theta, let's go back to our inclined plane, right? Theta can vary. I can lift my plane to make theta bigger. I can lower my plane to make theta smaller. Uh, so, but I also know, and that, I should say, that's going to change the value of the normal force, right? Let's go find where we uh, calculate the normal force. Mg cosine of theta. If theta changes, the normal force changes. Therefore, the force of static friction will change. Uh, so all these are variables. However, I know something about static friction. I know that there is a maximum possible value. And I demonstrated this in class. If you're in my class, I took the, the plane, or the, the inclined plane, and I raised, I put a book on it, and I raised it up until, just until that book began to slide. And that is the critical angle. That means that the um, force of static friction can no longer overcome the gravitational force that's trying to pull that book downwards, and the book starts to move. So that is where uh, those two are equal, which is what I have here. So what I'm actually deriving here is the fact that this angle, sine theta, or this angle theta, when these two, when frictional force can no longer overcome gravity, I'm at some theta critical, which I'll subscript as theta c. Right, and nothing about this equation prevents me from looking at that particular point. These are all general terms. Uh, so I can choose that critical angle at which my, my frictional force is um, can't overcome gravity any longer. Because the component of gravity, remember, would be incre the component of gravity directed down the ramp. That is this one right here. As that ramp is raised, if I bring it up here like this, that component of gravity is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the frictional force can only do so much against it. So now let me go back over here. I want to solve this for mu static in terms of my theta critical. So let me write that down. Mg sine of theta is equal to mu static mg cosine of theta. I've got mg's on both sides. I've got the gravitational force on both sides. Uh, so that is going to cancel, which I expect, because mu static is just a number. I don't expect dimensions to it. So sine theta and cosine theta are dimensionless. So that's, that I expect all the, the units, the, unit, the quantities with units, I should say, to, to leave. And then I can solve this for mu static, which equals, sorry, these are critical angles, which equals sine theta critical over cosine theta critical, which of course just equals, if you know some trigonometry, the tangent of theta critical. So this is actually the answer I was looking for to part C. Uh, if I were to ask you this on a test, uh, I would expect a little bit of derivation. I expect you to show me that a little bit. Uh, but you would get some points for just writing down if you knew that <clears throat> mu static is equal to the tangent of theta critical. And this is actually how you would calculate the mu static of that particular situation. You would run an experiment where you took a plane and you put something on that plane and you lifted that plane until it just started to move and then you would calculate the tangent of that angle. You would measure the angle and calculate the tangent. And that would give you uh, the the coefficient of static friction for that substance. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for in part C. Let's go back and look at part D. It's a long way back there. Calculate this value of C if the coefficient of static friction is 0.34. If you're in my class, please note how many points you get for this. Half a point. That's because, I hope you know by now, I don't think numbers are important. I think your process is important. So this is important. Sorry. This is important. Now I'm going to calculate it for mu static equals 0.34. So to do that, I will say 0 0.34 is equal to the tangent of theta critical. So then 
the critical angle theta equals the inverse tangent or the arc tangent, not 10. Don't know where that came from. Tangent inverse of 0 0.34. When I run those numbers, not that that's important. Uh, I mean, it's important, but not that that's the most important thing I get out of that, that that's 18.8 degrees or somewhere around there you know 18.78 uh, something along those lines 18.8 degrees okay let's look at part E so in part E now what I'm going to assume is that I've raised the block the uh, sorry raised the the plane the ramp past that critical angle and my block is now accelerating I should point out that at that critical angle uh, the block should move with a constant velocity. Uh, but if I go past that, the block will accelerate. And so now I'm looking at a, a, a situation where the block is accelerating down the ramp. So I'm going to ask, what is the acceleration of the block in terms of given quantities and constants? Well, in, in many ways, this is just solving the problem that we already solved, but with an extra term. So uh, please note that nothing in the y direction is going to change. I still have the same force of gravity, right, which is going to be uh, mg, which still resolves into mgx and mgy, specifically y is mg cosine of theta, and I still have the normal force. All of my other forces are in the x direction, so all this work I've done in the y direction is still valid. Check. My normal force is still mg cosine of theta. No big deal. In the x direction, however, I'm going to have an extra term because if I look at my x uh, direction calculation uh, when I was using static friction and my block wasn't moving my acceleration in the x direction was zero and that is no longer the case it's still the case in the y direction but not the x direction so I need to do that calculation again I get some of the forces in the x direction is equal to m a sub x which is not zero in fact that's what I'm solving for and then I'm just going to, again, sum up my forces in the x direction. So, sorry, i got to look at my picture. Let's go all the way back. In the x direction, I've got, in blue, mg sine of theta, my gravity component down the, down the ramp. And then I've got the force of friction back up the ramp. So I'm calling up the ramp negative and down the ramp positive. So I can come back over here and say I've got mg sine of theta. That's my... Uh, my component of gravity minus my frictional force and that is equal to m a sub x so my frictional force now is mu kinetic times the normal force my normal force remember was m g cosine theta where'd it go m g cosine theta that's my normal force that has not changed what has changed is what i'm plugging in for mu kinetic. All right, so let me just make that substitution. Mg sine of theta minus mu kinetic. It's a terrible looking mu and a terrible looking k. Minus mu k times the normal force. I already know that that's mg cosine of theta. And that is equal to max. So something interesting also happens here. I've got a mass term in every t every term here. There's m here, m here, m here. So those are going to go away. This cancels, this cancels, this cancels. I just divide the whole thing by m, which makes sense because I'm asking you for an acceleration. And think about the units of acceleration, meters per second squared. Nowhere in there is a kilogram, right? So I actually expect my masses to go away, and as it turns out, they do. And once they do, I've actually got the equation solved for a sub x. Let me rewrite it a little cleaner. a sub x is equal to g, the acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to factor that out. Sine of theta minus, ah, minus mu k. I cannot write k's today. Cosine of theta. Okay, so the mu k from here is what I almost left out. And that is the answer to part D.
that's the acceleration that this block will undergo. It is in the x direction, and as you can see, it's related to gravity, which of course is what we expect, right? Even though this thing isn't falling in a straight line, it's fall it's sliding down a ramp. Gravity has to be involved. If there were no gravity, would it slide down the ramp? No, of course not. So we expect something to to go on here. We expect some uh, contribution from gravity, and in this case, we we have the acceleration in terms of the gravitational acceleration.